Oscar, I think there's a dichotomy in your work between, on one side, a very strong I social ideal, and then on the, on the other side, uh, a production of painting. The yeah, edge did absolutely. I think uh, one could think of, of of China and new models of of capital, you know, versus a socialist kind of uh, system. In the context of my work too, I, 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 I you know, I, I have a big family. I have a big family, um, you know, in my network of cousins and 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 also, you know, where I come from in Colombia. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, that coming from also uh, a working class background and also culture, mm -hmm. um, perhaps one could read it in relation to wanting or, or, or pushing towards um, how these two models that uh, uh, in a Western context in the early 20th century, uh, they, they broke apart and became completely separated, how they could be reconciled. Um, and I think in, 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 in the system um, of production, as you said, uh, there is absolutely space um, for uh, socialist ideas. Um, I think it very much depends on the individual motive. But so when you are painting an abstraction and you, you are in a show, uh, in a fair or at uh, Zwirner, Yes. What's the relation with your ideal? I think if, if you think, for example, you know, um, let's go back to the works or the paintings that I was making, you know, almost 10 years ago, you know, even including, you know, a, a body of work like Manifestation that I started around five years ago, um, that in the Western context could be called, you know, pure abstraction. I think there is a complexity there of layers that are concrete, um, that perhaps, um, ironically, um, is a work that needs to be, you know, pulled apart and taken apart, um, and un and understood, not necessarily within the context of uh, the Western canon of painting. Um, I think when abstraction is mentioned and discussed, um, very often the conversation automatically takes you to this idea of the self, to this idea of the individual. And I think that perhaps, you know, I, I, am, I am fighting a battle that is complicated um, because I, I, am not, I am not interested in proliferating the ego. I think in, in, in relation to myself, as I said early, I am also very much in my, in my psychic referring to a broad number of people and the social complications in which I come from. And so and I think, I'm... and I think too, that painting, um, as I, as I see it almost very often, I said, I don't, I don't have to say anything else, but, you know, look at my face, you know, don't even, say anything else in terms of the, the uh, biographical, but look at my face. And I think that the, the numerous uh, exhibitions, uh, projects and so on that I've done uh, speak of this fact. And I actually believe that it's interesting that the work has this complication because it becomes an infiltration of sorts. And that is much more uh, interesting than to be literal in the discourse. So infiltration like what? Of infiltration, what? Infiltration of, I mean, for example, you know, sometimes you, you visit collections and, you know, for example, there is this work of mine from 2010. A collector bought the work and it was really interesting to see this was a story in which the collector said, I, my Mexican gardener walked across m my living room where your painting was, and he saw the word tamales. And he was completely transfixed and mesmerized by this. You know, that to me, it's, it's, 
is a work in itself and and is is something that perhaps does not it's not easy to translate this into let's say uh, um you know discourses that have already been written or discourses that are more are more easy to kind of accommodate themselves in the in the historical but um is there at the word gallery one can see one work which of, of yours uh, abstraction which is very typical and now you are doing new things right well i mean i mean now i i've always been inspired by by monets uh water lily paintings um it's i like you know as i said i'm i'm interested too in the purity of aesthetics and and color and but i i always felt like it was something that i was not allowed to do i said this no nobody else said it because i felt like my soul was not involved and i was given a copy of uh, monet's uh, biography and i went to uh, den haag museum mm -hmm. at the hague to see the this beautiful show by by monet and I also learned about his cataracts. Yes. At the, you know, when he was making this at uh, the end of the, his life, two hundred and fifty paintings, and I and I and I thought, you know, this um, idea of this artist whose work at the time was radical, but also the all these paintings that are now loved by the people everywhere. This man was making this work when he had cataracts and he was suffering, and he was frustrated. And also, he was losing it a little bit because of this. I thought this is more interesting as a problem. And I thought this is more interesting because you have people, you have quantity, and you have, you know, cataracts. So and it allow you to, to identify yourself? Exactly, because it, it, it became something, again, socialist. This idea of, of people this idea of suffering and this idea of beauty. And you are socialist? I think I, I like to think that, you know, it's it's a comp to, to, to politicize or to politicize in, in, in rigid terms is complicated. Um, like I said, I, I, I come from a, a big family. I'm a migrant. Um, and I think that naturally makes you uh, into somebody where you're constantly thinking about people and you're constantly thinking of, on, and also coming from a place of, of struggle as well. And I think in the, in the context of my family too, you know, racially it's diverse. So it, it, it makes it even more dynamic somehow. And so in a way it looks like you identify yourself to Diego Rivera, no? Uh, I identify with, again, a problem of how these two ideologies did not reconcile, how capitalism and how a socialist kind of ideal or ideology collided and they did not. You, uh, you, you, it's a reference to Rockefeller. It's in reference to my show um, I did in 2019 at the shed, I did a parade. I produced a video. Well, um, we did a parade between the the shed, you know, in New York. Yes. And Fifth Avenue, where the Rockefeller building. I did a parade with the uh, Mateos, you know, this this um, Mateos, which are this um, representation in the Colombian culture, folkloric culture. Is is the shield to protect the spirit that you burned at the end of the year but i i stole it and and bought it into my work as the representation of the people but it's a reference to uh, uh rockefeller um asking diego rivera to paint on his wall and as it was too socialist he decided to, to pay and to destroy yes it's in reference to this problem you know, which which um, the the Whitney Museum did a beautiful show called uh, Vida Americana. It's it was a great show. It was a fantastic show, which also, you know, 
Philip Gaston was heavily influenced by this. Um, so, so you see that the, the idea, of, or the historical idea of abstraction, has an interesting, you know, is an interesting, one can say, uh, a net that is not very, you know, linear, mm -mm. and that there are different readings. And I think this is where I do not want to make assumptions about my work, but I, but my work and, 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 and where it comes from is definitely not linear, particularly in the context of North America. And so are you going to keep on with uh, Monet inspiration? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm just beginning. I think it's, it's something that um, allows for, you know, um, a certain kind of uh, counterpart to, let's say, the energetic nature of some of my paintings, um, I think is a is an interesting avenue of exploration, um, and it it it's just the beginning. I think I'm I'm right now. I'm simply just presenting the problem, um, both aesthetically and and also uh, um, as an idea. And but it's interesting because you are someone who uses the word the word problem in a very positive way. Yeah. For you, problem is good. Problems are always good. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it keeps you going. It, oh. keep, it keeps the energy level. And when you have no problem, you create problems. I think when there's no problem, you have to create problems. That's what the Americans and, do. And But you are very good at that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The Americans are very good at, you know, causing problems around the world. Um, so maybe I'm learning a little bit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Merci. Thank you, dear.